सुनील सुब्रमण्यम नो जॉइन्स अस सुनील गुड मॉर्निंग थैंक यू फॉर जॉइनिंग अस 14000 करोड़ हैज कम इन दिस मार्केट ओनली पोस्ट बजट 3 एंड 1/2 बिलियन डॉलर्स हैज कम इन दिस कैलेंडर ईयर सो शुड वी स्टार्ट टेकिंग अ व्यू ऑन लिक्विडिटी एंड देन अ व्यू ऑन मार्केट और शुड वी स्टार्ट विद अ व्यू ऑन मार्केट एंड देन अ व्यू ऑन लिक्विडिटी हाउ शुड वी स्टार्ट <laughs> i leave it to you but given that liquidity is the key driver i can start with liquidity as a spec so then how does one take a view on liquidity so it's uh, the situation is like nikuj i think it's the best is called the tina option right mm-hmm. there is no alternative today so if you look from an international perspective there are very few alternatives to india and within india there are very few alternatives to equities so uh, so both those cases are driving money srp flows are month on month growing and foreigners because you know we have this uh, frog in the well syndrome right is the box things in the well is this whole world so for us uh, we look at our economy we had built up expectation of 8% growth nbfcs were lending merrily everybody was borrowing and then when that slowed down the crisis hit and it came down to 5% 6% then 5% Uh, we started getting despondent and pessimistic thinking the world is collapsing around us but if you look at the international scenario they're looking at 1.8 and then going to 1.9 in america and saying oh growth is back so i think the perspective of the scale of yes definitely india would love to grow at 8% and it would have been nice to grow from 8 to 10 and we all had that aspiration but to the world outside a slow down india at 6 to 6 and a half for next year against a world of 3 to 3.3 or 3.4 post war crisis it will get corrected a bit more it's like we're going at double the rate of the world so if i want to put my liquidity and my liquidity is surplus there's something like 75 billion to 100 billion dollars a month that's being pumped by america us and japan put together this year per month it's got to find a way somewhere interest rates can't go even more negative gold can't go even more higher so money will find that equities right will be the natural space which is a house for liquidity from a worldwide post that's why 3 billion dollars has just come in just two months 45 days post the new year the other thing from an india perspective also if you look at is that the moment you had liquidity come in and this been buying a few stocks at the same time lots of green shoots have started to appear in the economy things were not looking as bad so the downturn so if you look a range of sectors rail freight air transport car cargo uh, you take even private capex small green shoots of revival cement production steel production so there are a number of small things nobody is saying that this is a definite recovery coming but the fact is that the slowdown has been arrested is a is a is a big big positive thought process from a liquidity perspective saying okay it's better the third aspect is that the broader market trading at a very deep discount to the larger caps and within the larger caps also the narrowness of the rally so there are a whole bunch of sectors and stocks which are selling at a discount to the the few match winners so to speak so to that extent people getting more comfort in spreading their investments wider and naturally when you go wider the depth of liquidity you can absorb also becomes greater so i think liquidity is is the main uh, mantra which is driving the markets up and i see that for the rest of the year with the wuhan crisis if anything you're going to see even greater liquidity pumping coming into the world economy whether it's from china itself or from the rest of the world in order to you know the world knows only one way print your way out of trouble that's the kind of standard mantra that you know policy makers and bankers central bankers across the world have adopted and If you go by that track record, I don't see that 2020 is going to suffer from liquidity. If anything, it's going to increase. With our RBI also is getting more innovative in terms of how to channelize liquidity. They did 135 basis rate cut, but then they found transmission was not great. So they've done an uh, operation twist. They've done the LTROs, and they are doing their best to ensure transmission takes place. Now, any success of transmission is obviously good news from an economy perspective and from a liquidity perspective. So I think that. Uh, liquidity is is the main overarching reason that we in the short term can remain reasonably bullish about the stock market and its prospects my point it's a very clear view that liquidity is abundant so when liquidity when the liquidity patch has been abundant and since you mentioned that we are in for a low growth for a long time then can i assume that the same ringa ringa roses of 15 20 stocks will continue and the carnival or the market party will be limited to 15 25 sunil will say 30 some
income fund manager would say 35 i mean that is the universe where markets will focus on uh, i don't uh, dispute that uh, because when there is excess liquidity and there is uh, a lower growth for a longer time while some amount of money will bet on the value and the long term growth a bulk of the money would go into safety saying hey, it's okay bank deposits are giving me 6% i get 8 to 10% yield from the best quality stocks because i know that in a post reform scenario the bigger are going to get bigger because you know demonetization and gst all this has hurt the informal informal smaller players naturally the larger players are going to increase market shares and hence the stock market will also concentrate towards that if the 15 20 might widen to 40 50 because you're going to see number of most sectors also come in and not just those narrow ones second is the fact is that uh, a little bit of the small caps and mid caps in those very sectors would also be attractive so i would say i would not restrict myself to 15 20 but yes it will still be a concentrated market where stock picking and choosing and the second reason uh, Nikunj is when liquidity is your main driver and one of the main ways to pick investment picks uh, is to figure out what the other person is going to buy as opposed to just trusting on your saying this company will do better because when liquidity is chasing you are the smartest guy who's figuring out that which stocks are sectors are going to be boy, bought by the guys with the larger liquidity which is obviously FII, sovereign wealth funds uh, ETFs and the like and then going and putting your money behind those because that liquidity driver is then going to benefit you so there is a little bit of a guessing game or you may say thinking game about where is it from a world recovery perspective if China is going to go through a slowdown then what's going to happen if it's going to recover what's going to happen what are that implication so a little bit of water finds its own level liquidity finds its own level and people will track the path of liquidity and hence make their investments but i broadly agree that we are for a shorter period of time going to be on a very concentrated market and stock picking is going to be the key uh, in this uh, coming uh, weeks and months so sunil what happens to the classics then good old value investing buy cheap sell expensive because right now what people are doing is that they are guessing where liquidity is going to go and they are buying expensive and selling it more expensive. What has become more expensive is becoming ultra expensive. And what has become ultra expensive, I don't know how to describe it. I don't have a term beyond ultra expensive actually. I agree that the basic fundamental tenets are being challenged. And I think it's a very unusual situation that we are faced with. And I think, uh, yes, you know, if you look at the classic methodologies of investing, that is going to lead you. And I'll remind you that, you know, in the early 2000s and all, or in the tech boom time, Mr. Warren Buffet got it wrong, right? So in that period, yes, in the long term, Warren Buffet gets it right. In the long term, those fundamentals will prove right. But if you look at the situation prevalent currently, right, you have at best a U-shaped recovery happening in the second half of the current year and then coming up, but there's liquidity abundant chasing. You have no choice but to do that because you don't want to be left behind in the race. While we all say long term wealth creation will happen, and there are funds which do that long term and every fund allocates some money to long term. In the short run, since all of us are driven by what is called as benchmarking, right? We have to benchmark ourselves to the index, we have to benchmark ourselves to the peers. And so you will have to have a mix of a tactical short term approach and a long term value based growth uh, in the long run paying off based uh, mix. And that mix today is tilted in favor of the tactical short term yes undeniably that is there but and that's more also more reason why people should trust their money to fund managers and not venture themselves into these stocks because that, that, while the research of the fund manager goes into sector stock you know the typical eic framework there's also research which goes on to the market moves the liquidity and all of that so the fund managers expertise comes in also being aware of global events where that's going to lead and putting that so it's not just guesswork it's actually calculated and educated uh, guesswork so so I wouldn't miss that so much. It is important because that's what has delivered returns over the last 12, 18 months and in the near term will continue to do so. Nikon. All right. So, Sunil, uh, you know, let's talk about your balanced fund as well. Um, first of its kind, you know, you've been talking about the plans for this, uh, getting set now. Uh, talk to us about the unique proposition that it's going to offer. So if you look at it, I was just, uh, as I was just talking with Nikonj, right, we are in a phase of the economy where there's a lot of liquidity, both from abroad and in India, 
but the recovery in the economy is going to take some time and the stock markets being lead indicators you are going to go through a phase where you are going to get price increases in stocks very rapidly but earnings are going to trail so you are going to go from a situation where over the next 6 months, 12 months, 1 year, 18 months you will make money from the stock markets but valuations are going to get more expensive, more expensive and you are going to get start get, getting worried so a balance advantage fund, what it does, by using a simple PE, trailing PE filter to decide how much I put into equity and how much I put into fixed income, largely safer fixed income which is more the coupon driven fixed income and cutting the equity component when you it's getting more expensive, more expensive and shifting that into either equity or into what I'd like to call as hedged equities which is arbitrage in other words, right, because that way you still get equity taxation on your overall fund which as you know still is the best tax rate for any kind of uh, thing today. Today you take business income or you take uh, any other income, equity capital gains is still the least taxed uh, asset class in the country. So you are going to be able in this fund to get the advantage of equity taxation. At the same time when markets are very becoming very expensive, your arbitrage equity component which is basically no interest rate risk, no credit risk but volatility gives you some returns and the fixed income which is giving you stable returns will give you a overall exposure to the markets in terms of all the three asset classes at the same time assure you equity taxation and you will definitely be able to get arguably better than any competitive rates of interest in the uh, market from a fixed deposit of that perspective. So Dutterson is an excellent product for first time equity investors those who are a little bit wary of equities to come in, experience the equity markets and then as they learn from this experience, they can migrate into you know, the cap curve funds and the longer term for pure equity exposures. So like I said, it's a good entry level product. It's something which uh, takes lesser equity when markets are very overvalued and takes more equity as the valuations become reasonable, use fixed income and uh, hedged equities which is arbitrage in a very smart way. So you're balancing and risk, risk and reward for you by being flexible across three asset classes. So I think that's the key uh, um, advantage of this uh, balance advantage fund and uh, you know we have done something very similar in our equity hybrid fund but that's a fixed asset allocation of 70, 65 to 70 percent equity and 25 to 30 percent debt. This one will have a little more flexibility to include arbitrage and reduce equity if necessary. So that's the uh, you know, the advantage of this fund and I think uh, it's something that definitely investors should look at given the current market situation and if they are looking for better than uh, fixed deposit returns in terms of their uh, wealth creation. Thank you Sunil for joining us this morning uh, and talking Thank us through the latest there.